When a woman with a drinking problem witnesses a murder in her neighbor's house, she will do the best she can to discover the truth and bring the killer to justice. And if this sounds like something you have watched before, it's because you probably have. This is Netflix's own parody show to some of their own content disguised as a drama with a dark comedy tone. Oh boy, this is gonna be good. And that's why today in Flick Summary, the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. The show starts us off with Anna, a lonely woman living in the suburbs whose only hobbies seem to be drinking wine, cooking casseroles, and spying on her neighbors day and night through the window in her living room. Anna seems to have isolated from everyone and is now all alone after her husband left her and moved out of the house. One morning, Anna is looking through the window when she spots one of her neighbors taking her kids to school. She then calls Elizabeth, her daughter, and asks her to hurry as she has to take the little girl to school as well and doesn't want her to be late. Anna does go to the school, but we can't see Elizabeth anywhere, only a group of annoying soccer moms staring at Anna and talking trash behind her back. Cause you know, she had gone all the way to the school in a bathrobe and pajamas. That night, Anna is getting ready for a date with a guy she's never met before, but as she is about to leave, she goes to Elizabeth's room and asks her for a kiss, which the little girl doesn't agree to because, well... I can't. Why not? Because I'm dead? This obviously changes Anna's mood, who decides not to go on her date anymore and simply takes a bath to relax and then falls asleep in her couch after drinking quite a lot of wine. There's also some weird noise coming from the attic, but we won't learn much about it until the very last episode of the show. The next morning, Anna wakes up to her new neighbor, Neil, knocking on her door to give her some flowers that he found on Anna's front. They engage in a really brief conversation, and our wine lover immediately falls in love with the guy she just met one minute ago. Anna leaves the house to go visit her daughter's grave, and when she returns, Emma, Neil's daughter, is waiting at her door. The little girl wanted to sell her some cookies, and Anna is happy to buy some. But seeing as Emma lives only with her dad, and her mother had died some time ago, she relates to the family and offers to bring the little girl and her father some casserole. During the afternoon, Anna finishes the meal, and as she's walking across the street to deliver the food, rain starts pouring and Anna faints, dropping the casserole. Yeah, she's got some weird but real phobia called ombrophobia, but we'll get to the reason behind it very soon. Neil sees the whole thing and takes her back to her house where she comes back to herself and they engage in some friendly conversation. Anna reveals Emma had told her about her mother passing away and then promises Neil she will bring them another casserole as they talk about Anna's painting on the wall. Next morning, we meet Buell, Anna's handyman who is fixing her mailbox and promises it will be ready soon. Anna does as she promised and takes another casserole to Neil's house where she stays from day to night and drinks some wine with the single father while socializing with little Emma who's also there laughing with them both. A day later, Anna is trying to get more involved with Emma and so she goes to the little girl's house to leave some markers for her to paint. But as she's getting there, she bumps into Lisa, Neil's girlfriend who seems kind of friendly but is really just faking it. She takes the markers from Anna and says she will hand them to Emma. This takes Anna to go into full toxic mode and start spying on Lisa through her window and trying to find out everything she can about her. She gets into Neil's Instagram account and starts stalking him until she finds a picture of him and Lisa where she's tagged. <laughs> this already sounds like you from Netflix. I told you they were parodying their own shows. Anyways, Anna gets into Lisa's account and sees some guy nicknamed Sexy Rex, leaving some thirst comments on all of Lisa's posts. She also spots the woman arguing on the phone over her window and is quick to notice that Lisa has not one, but two phones. Unable of minding her own business, Anna gets suspicious and tries to find out more about her. Cause you know, she wants Neil for herself. So she creates a fake Instagram account and follows Sexy Rex to try and discover what is his relationship with Neil's girlfriend. Thing is, Lisa won't be a problem for much longer cause that night while Anna is drinking some wine and looking through a window, she sees Lisa dying after someone stabbed her in the neck. Anna is now freaking out and rushes to call the police to inform what she just saw. But seeing as it will take some time for them to arrive, she walks out from her house and attempts to get to Neil's place to help Lisa in any way she can. Unfortunately, that night was raining and so Anna couldn't get past the middle of the street. She faints and someone we can't see takes her to her house where she rests until the police arrives and knocks up on her door. Anna is confronted by the officers who tell them she must have imagined the whole thing after they spot a bottle of wine in the coffee table. You see, when the police talked to Neil and told him about what Anna had seen, he told them Lisa had left the house earlier that night because she was getting late for her flight to Seattle, where she worked as a flight attendant. 
Anna, however, is certain of what she saw and is not willing to let go of this case. In fact, she gets so obsessed that the morning after she confronts Neil and asks for an explanation. Neil calms Anna down, telling her that he had texted Lisa the day before and there was no way she was dead. This, however, doesn't do anything for Anna who still suspects Neil and grabs his phone to see if the conversation was real. When she reads the text on Neil's phone, everything seems to be in order, but there's still doubt in Anna's heart. So, when Neil leaves the house with Emma that day to run some errands, Anna breaks into his place to look for some evidence that helps her prove what she had witnessed. She does find Lisa's earring on the floor, but that's pretty much it. Anna continues to look around the house, but gets discovered by Emma and her father who walk into the house when Anna least expected it. She gets scolded for breaking in and is kicked out by Neil. But far from feeling regret for getting into Neil's house without permission, she thinks she had the right to investigate. This is, of course, until she talks to her friend Sloane, who tells her what she's doing is not sane and that she probably imagined the whole thing the same way she imagined her daughter still being alive. Anna comes to her senses and accepts that possibility, so she backs off of Neil's back and goes to a support group where after the first session, she takes the decision of traveling out of the city to clear her mind. However, when she gets to the airport and is waiting to buy her ticket, she notices there had not been any flights to Seattle in several days. This leads her to realize that Neil had lied and Lisa had not taken any flights to that city. Anna goes to the police station and talks to Detective Lane trying to get her to investigate the case and shows her the earring as evidence. The detective doesn't show any interest and tells Anna she's cutting her some slack simply because she knows what happened to her daughter. And it's time for some background story. So here it goes. Anna's ex-husband Douglas, who is now also her therapist, works as a forensic psychiatrist for the FBI, specialized in serial killers. One day, Anna asked her husband to take her daughter with him to work as it was take your kid to work day. Being that Anna worked from home as an artist, she couldn't think of a better idea than to suggest Elizabeth to go with her father to a place where she would be surrounded by serial killers. They go to the prison and Elizabeth's father takes her to a room where they meet with a murderer who had not only killed 30 people, but also ate them all. Douglas gets called out of the room by the prison's warden and as he's leaving to discuss some urgent matter, the door behind him closes and locks, leaving Elizabeth all alone with the serial killer whom authorities had nicknamed Massacre Mike. The deranged psycho kills the little girl and eats her before her father or the authorities could do anything to stop him. And remember Anna's phobia of the rain? Well, it turns out it was raining the day her daughter died. Anyways. Back to the present, Anna is now more determined to investigate Lisa's death and she uses her ex-husband's ID number to call the FBI records and run some background check on both Lisa and her apparent lover Rex. They promise to call her back with information and she thanks them before going back to drinking wine as she does every night. The next morning Anna continues to investigate, but this time is trying to find proof that Neil was in fact responsible for killing Lisa. So she goes online and surfs the internet where she discovers Neil had actually been a suspect in his wife's death. Not only that, but as she investigates further, she also learns that only a few days after that event, Emma's teacher also died. And I don't mean die in a peaceful way of natural causes, I mean die as in she fell off a lighthouse during a school trip where Neil was also present. Anna is now more confident that Neil is behind all of this and her suspicions intensify when she spots him dragging a duffel bag to his car that day during the night. She thinks he might be disposing of Lisa's body, so she gets into her car and follows him to an alley where she sees Neil getting the duffel back off of the car and close to the garbage. But before she can do anything, Neil spots Anna and they get into an argument that ends up with Anna opening the duffel bag and discovering that there was a body inside, but not a human one. Turns out Neil had found a way to cope with his wife's death by becoming a ventriloquist. So he carried a puppet with him to perform at a bar located right in the sketchy alley. Anna apologizes and gets back home. But when she is about to open the door, the FBI calls her back to warn her about Rex, who conveniently shows up just at the exact moment to cover Anna's mouth and force her inside the house. Rex threatens Anna, but as soon as she realizes he might have some answers to what happened to Lisa, she calms down and they start talking. Here we learn that Lisa was a hustler working alongside with Rex to rip off rich guys, and Neil was set to be his latest victim. Rex thinks Lisa disappeared with all the money and left Rex without his cut. Anna tells Rex she saw Lisa getting killed, but he doesn't believe her. So when he is finally getting ready to leave the house, Anna seduces him somehow and they end up sleeping together. 
As this is happening, a dog is barking at Lisa's body which confirms she had indeed been killed and none of what happened during the night of the events had been Anna's imagination. The next morning, the police show up at Anna's place and they storm in arresting Rex for Lisa's murder. They somehow knew he was there and also came to the conclusion that Rex was the killer based on a voice message he had left to Lisa where he threatened her life. However, he goes free once the police discover the alleged murder weapon which just so happens to be one of Anna's oil painting palettes. She gets taken to a holding cell but makes bail the next morning thanks to her friend Sloan. Anna returns home and at night she starts having hallucinations once again. She calls her ex-husband slash therapist to tell him she might have been actually responsible for killing Lisa since she sees some blood coming from her attic and thinks that's Lisa's body. He calms her down and encourages her to go up to the attic and face her fears. She does as he says and when she goes up she discovers it wasn't blood linking off the attic but just red paint. However, while there she also discovers something sinister. Remember the noises coming from the attic? Well, as it would seem, Buell had been living there for God knows how long. Douglas tells Anna Buell was his first patient and had been declared criminally insane, but was released after he rehabilitated him and gave him another chance getting him a job fixing Anna's mailbox, which, if you haven't noticed, hasn't been fixed in three years. Now what did Buell do? Well… He killed his entire family with a claw hammer. Anna then sees Buell walking with a hammer towards Neil's house and panics at the thought of him harming Emma. So she plucks up some courage and runs through the rain up to Neil's house where she sees Buell wounded in the floor and discovers it wasn't the father behind all the killing, but Emma who was the psycho all along. <laughs> Listen, if you watch Netflix The Woman in the Window, you had to see this coming. This parody of a show literally copies the ending from that movie. Anyways, Emma falls into the cliché of explaining her whole evil plan and reveals what she had done. You know, killing Lisa, her mother, teacher, and now her father. Now she plans to kill Anna, pin it all on her and then play the victim card saying she had to kill the crazy neighbor in self-defense. They get into what tries to appear to be a serious fight. But come on, really? How serious can you take this fight? It's Anna versus a little nine-year-old. You might as well put her to fight against Chucky. Despite all odds, Emma proves to be a total badass and wounds Anna really bad. But as she is about to deliver the final blow, Anna picks up a broken piece of casserole and stabs Emma in the heart. Fortunately, Douglas shows up in time to see everything and make sure to testify in favor of Anna so she wouldn't go to jail. And that's it. Oh yeah, and there's also the scene where she gets to a plane and witnesses another murder. But who knows, with this show, you really can't take anything seriously. I mean, it was entertaining, I'll give you that, but there are so many things here that make no sense. And I mean, I understand that's the purpose, after all, it's a satire. But when you start binge watching the show thinking this is an actual drama, that's when the whole ridiculousness hits you. But enough of it. Now tell me, what did you think of the show? Would you like it to be a second season? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends.